Hi, I'm Janie Pendleton. We're back in the kitchen where I promised you I was going to show you how to do uh, my meals in a jar. Now, the first thing you want to start out with is you want to start out with fresh produce. And uh, being in the garden and coming in and out and with the food and stuff, uh, it takes a while to wash all this up and to cut it and, and to slice it and get it all ready to fit in the jars. You want to make sure that you wash everything really well. Some people even have like a fruit or vegetable wash that they use. That's perfectly fine for this. Uh, make sure to, um, if you buy your lettuce, make sure you rinse it really well and dry it really well. If you have a lettuce spinner, that's excellent. Again, this is great for taco salads and things like that. When you shred it like this, but when it's shredded like this, iceberg lettuce doesn't last very long. You're gonna wanna put this in the refrigerator or in a sealed canning jar and vacuum seal it, put it in the refrigerator and it will last longer than it does in a bag like this if you get all the air out of it. But try to buy lettuce and produce that's in really good shape to begin with. Check the bottom of the bag, make sure you don't have frozen lettuce or even lettuce that's like already turning brown and with water sticking to the bottom of the bag. But straight from the garden is best. That will last the longest. I've had my meals in a jar last anywhere from five to eight days. You can add things like uh, chia seeds and things like that to your yogurt dressings. You can add, um, you can make a really good feta and dill and Greek yogurt dressing with a little bit of lemon juice. Delicious. That's one. I've got a peach and Greek a yogurt one. I've got some, um, one of my fresh pears. And I, what I did here with the fresh pear is I just drizzled it with a little bit of lemon juice and then kind of tossed it here. And this is, I'm gonna have you try that. It's no, good. Pear is delicious, isn't it? Mm -hmm. mm. And again, you can even add the fresh fruit indirectly into, right into your Greek yogurt. And then you can put that in the bottom of your jar. Or what I like to do is put a lid on this. I save my little yogurt tops, put a little piece of foil or plastic on that and sit that right down on top and then vacuum seal. This way, this stuff stays dry and it doesn't have to sit down inside the, um, inside the dressing. Besides our lettuces, we have uh, fresh celery from the garden. We have tomatoes. Tomatoes, these have less acidity. So if you find tomatoes bother you, uh, like I do, uh, try the yellow tomatoes. They're much easier on the old digestive system. We've got wash fresh uh, mushrooms and we've just chopped these up. We've got some baby carrots. Also had a bag of shredded carrots. Had one cucumber. We've got some broccoli and John likes to soak his broccoli in very hot tap water or do you boil it or how do you do it daddy? Wash it and then uh, soak it um, for a while. Uh, in, in, uh, it doesn't have to be boil, boiling, but hot salt water to okay. bring uh, any remaining bugs in there to the top. Okay. And or you can actually even put in a little bit of vinegar. A little vinegar will bring that the bugs to the top as well. So we've done that for you. We've, we've cleaned it really well because that's the way Daddy likes to eat his uh, raw broccoli. And I think that's good. <clears throat> like you said, if you don't put it in the jar, you won't get it out of the jar. So it's a good way to get the little bugs off. We have some beautiful strawberries here from our garden. Some of them are so tiny. So we can be adding some strawberries to this as well. We have some really good red, orange, uh, and yellow bell peppers that I just chunked up here. Here, taste one of these, Daddy. Mm. Good? Yeah, they're uh, not hot. They're really sweet. Actually. They're a very, They're a very sweet pepper. Grow food in your garden. I cannot tell you how important this is. Well, if you don't have a garden, do it in the patio pot. <laughs> yeah, if you don't have a garden area, then do it in the patio pots. We've been trying that this year to see how it turns out. Um, now that we have neighbors, we don't have the land next to us to garden anymore. So we've had to be a little bit more strategic and put plants in and around our landscape. Here we have a couple of little florets of cauliflower and I just chopped these up into some smaller pieces. Daddy likes cauliflower. Washed it again really well. And then of course any kind of cheeses work here. Um, this is just a mix of Monterey Jack and Cheddar. 
We also have um, shredded Parmesan if you want more of like a Caesar salad. We have some shredded feta or crumbled feta and that just works really great for the dill and Greek yogurt dressing that I'm going to be making. Um, some blue cheese. You can add that to the mix and add a little bit of blue cheese dressing or blue cheese and yogurt together. There's so many combinations you can do. Think about your favorite salad bar and what you would put on your salad at a, your favorite salad bar. And you can put that in your, uh, in your own canned jar of salad, your salad in a jar. We talked about fruit. Here I have some of our fresh cherries and I've only pitted just a few. Uh, because I didn't have time to pit everything and um, here for meat daddy I got you some grilled chicken smell that it is smells so good mm, yeah. and if you want daddy you can even put a little taco seasoning mix on this some mm -hmm. gluten-free taco seasoning mix mm -hmm. let's go beyond the grill and, and do some other things and then here I have some cubed leftover ham that we had for breakfast all right so and here I want to talk a little bit about the types of lettuces that help your salad in a jar stay fresh longer, especially when we're out in the RV traveling. Um, romaine hearts of lettuce. This lettuce I find chopped up along with my spring mix or my arugula and spinach. These are the things that actually stay crispier longer. And believe it or not, especially if I have greens of the celery mixed in there. I don't know if it's the salt texture that's in here in the celery, but when I blend the celery in with the greens, it seems like it, I can get another day or two out of it. Classic iceberg lettuce, especially if you buy it bagged and not straight off the head and you don't grow it, it's not going to last as long in the refrigerator. Sorry. Um, but the romaine lettuce does. And again, a lot of your harder cheeses will uh, work better in this than soft cheese. Okay? And just a quick discussion. I'm going to throw some Greek yogurt raisins, craisins, in some of mine because I love that. And then here are some sweetened dried cherries. Any type of dried fruit you can add as well. We've mixed our yogurt. This is just a little bit of Greek yogurt that I saved the cup for and some strawberries chopped in here and much because that's the way I like mine. And then this is just a little bit of chopped up fresh peach that I had left over. And a little All right, bit. now the secret to this, and I guess mine's on this side, I'm going to do one and a half pints. Daddy's going to do a quart size jars. You can even do the one pint but just be sure and use wide mouth jars. All right, we want to use wide mouth jars. This really helps to sit things down in here. Well, I mean, I'd probably find a container, of course, that fits. But uh, if you want to do your yogurt on top, you can find a container that actually fits down inside of here. I've got all my jars uh, washed and they've been steam cleaned in the dishwasher. I got my little magnet thing here to help kind of push things down in there. So just something that you can use to push. People usually want to put the salad in first and then go towards the wet ingredients and just kind of let that soak through. Well, that's bad. That makes your salad wet, your salad sits in water, and then it grows old quicker. So what you, and then when you dump your salad out onto a plate, the issue with this is, is then you don't have your, um, your yogurt and stuff or your dressing, it's not on top. So I always put the wettest ingredients on the bottom, including fruit and anything that can go down inside the wettest ingredients. And then I put the dry ingredients ending with the salad. So when I toss this upside down like this on a plate and I go like this, then I can just kind of drizzle out the dressing then on top. Tomatoes. Uh, mushrooms. Good choice. Some broccoli and a little bit of celery. Good job. Ooh, some carrots. Put, put lots of carrots in there. You got layered that on. You got room. There you go. Um, you got cauliflower. Ooh, he's making his nice and colorful. Now at this stage, what I do is I just stop and I just kind of give it a little bit of a press. You're going to be glad that you did it in a minute. <laughs> 
chicken, that's fine. A little bit of chicken. Oh, he's going for the orange pepper. Okay, now take your green, your little green magnet there. Kind of push it down again. There you go. That's good. Would you like some pear or strawberries? Or mm -hmm. there's even some really good fresh. Ooh, two of them. Special two of them. <laughs> And a little bit of iceberg lettuce. There you go. Good job. A little bit of the spring mix. And this is the arugula and spinach. And I and I got this specially for you. So, and trust me, we're gonna really stuff that in there. So, there you go. Is that it? Yep. Now, do you want to eat a little bit of cheese? Just a little bit, not a whole lot. All right. Just a little bit of cheese on top. Let's, let's kind of toss the cheese down inside of there just a little bit and kind of get that cheese tossed in there. He doesn't want a lot, just a little bit. There we go. We're kind of tossing the cheese in there. We don't want that to get stuck together in one big clump. So if you toss the cheese in here with it. Now what we're going to do now is we've got plenty of room for more lettuce. Trust me. We're going to go ahead and press this in. We're just pressing in just like this. Now here's John's. And you watched him make it and you've seen how easy it was when you do it in a buffet style like this then everybody can have what they desire what they want a little bit of water or a little bit of vinegar that's fine if you want your dressing or your yogurt in now if you want your dressing or your yogurt in now then what you can do is again i would suggest putting it on the bottom so when you tilt this upside down you will have the dressing on the top Plus, you won't have that dressing coming all through here making this soggy while it's in storage. I, however, store my dressing separately. Or if you save the little dressing packets from things from when you go out to eat at lunch for at work or whatever, or you can get those little packets or ask for like certain dressings whenever your kids get their chicken nuggets, you can ask for extra honey dressing or ranch dressing cups, then just put those down in there and then seal them with those down inside of there. But I always wash them really well because you know other people have touched them. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we wiped off our rim really well. We've got a clean ball lid here, clean ring. Now you can put it in the refrigerator like this or we can use our handy dandy sealing machine. And remember, this is just the food saver, the hose, and this is our large size candy jar lid. Place the lid on in the center, lock the machine, you know, watch this green light, when the green light comes on, go ahead and put top, light, okay, see how we did, I didn't hear a pop, but there it is, alright, show this to you up close, and there we have it, we know that that's on. All right, all the air is out, and his salad is in perfect condition, and this will last him at least, since it's got the arugula and the spinach in it, it should last a good five days in the refrigerator, vacuum sealed. So he's all ready to go with his salad, and whenever he's ready to eat one, all he has to do is gently pop this open so he can reuse this lid over and over and over. You know, I've reused my lids many, many, many times over. And remember, you can't reuse your lids for canning, pressure canning but you can reuse your lids for vacuum sealing either from vacuum sealing or from canning so these are reusable and old used lids okay if they're in good shape you can use them for vacuum sealing so now you know what to do with all those lids that you thought you were losing you can use them for vacuum sealing all right so we've got that and just in case we're traveling there you go and there's our first salad in a jar He's got the wetter ingredients that might leak on the bottom. And we're just going to sit this right up here. And that too will go into the refrigerator. Okay? I just want to give you an example of how I can get my yogurt and my lettuce all in one meal. And I can even, there's enough in here this could last me for two meals. No doubt. I could eat. Um, but when I do pour this out, I, don't, I get my dressing on top. Okay? So here's another one for the refrigerator. Okay, here John is just starting out with his salad in a jar, which of course we just dumped it right out onto his plate. 
We have some extra dressing here for dipping the salmon and or for drizzling onto a salad. We've got the Greek yogurt in here as well, so that is fine. So be sure and stay tuned tonight because we've got some really great conversations coming up with Maranatha Minutes.